Hello students, our next topic is Chenille Exminster Fabrics. Okay, this is one of the important and very interesting topic of this fabric structure. So we can see, one by one we will see now. Okay, so this is a one of the, what do you mean by Chenille? The word chenail is the French word that represents the caterpillar. You can see in the figure, this is the caterpillar, right? So in this, if you observe this caterpillar, you can see that some fibrous material is projecting from the surface of the, uh, this caterpillar. Right, that means inside there is a core, then some fibrous, that means like hair like appearance will be there. So, obviously, if you, if, if you see, you can see the, uh, the only, only the fibers only we can see. So, the word is coming from the French word caterpillar. Okay, that is the chenail. This is also another one figure. So, these structures, how we are achieving in the textile by the techniques adopting in the textiles, how we are going to achieve this appearance. One by one, we can say, see. So, the main distinctive features of chenille exminster fabrics are a cut pile is produced without the aid of wire. Already we have studied in this one. Ah, one of the uh, cut pile fabric production technique is with, with the aid of wire. So, with the, with the aid of wire, we can create the cut pile fabrics. But here, the specialty is that here we are not using any type of metallic wires for making the cut pile. That is one of the important speciality. All the pile material is on the surface of the foundation of cloth. That means from the foundation, if you observe the final fabrics, all the pile materials, that means all the fibers in the pile that will projecting from the foundation of the cloth. And another one important point, any number of colors can be employed. That means in this fabric, we can use different colors of pigs. There is a no limit. So these three are the important points regarding chenille exminster. So here in this topic also you can see chenille exminster pile fabrics production using hand loom. As per our topic, we are first studied about the how we are going to make the fabric by using hand loops. That is a very very simple method, one by one we can see. For making this fabrics, that means for making the chenille exponential fabrics, we required two looms. How many looms are required? Two. That is in the first loom, we will make the chenille stripes and in the next loom process we will use that strips as the weft for making the final fabrics. So one by one we can see in the first loom process. So in this one first what we will do we will select the bar in a manner that a group of bar threads are placed in a some distance apart. That means, suppose here 4 thread, then after some time uh, distance, then again 4 thread, then distance again 4 thread. Likewise, we will arrange the bar threads. Then this bar point will work in a plain order. And also, the weft insertion is takes place as normal way but in some majority of the time, we will use the catch code for inserting more number of picks in a same shed. Right. 
So the plane view, in the case of handloom, we are using the plane view for making the first the chenille fabric yarn uh, fabric manufacturing. We are using the plane view. So in the first operation is tamed as weft weaving. Okay. Then after weaving, the fabrics are cut in the form of strips in length way, as shown in figure below. This is called as chenille weft. So figure you can see. So first what we will do, we will take the warp yarn in a group form. So here we will do 5 ends in a group, then next 5 ends in a group. These are kept in a some distance apart. Then in the same shed, the 2 ends we are inserting, that will work in a plain order. So accordingly we have to, we will insert. So for finally what will happen? The fabric is produced. Now the end product is that the fabric. So what is the specialty of this fabric? As usual, if you see the fabric, ah, there is an interlacement in some part, then long weft float, then again some interlacement, again weft float. Ah. So, this we can see. So, after that, what we will do? We will cut the weft in non interlacing area. That means this part we will cut in the form of a strips. So do that strips, if you see, I have cut this fabric in a strip form and kept in horizontal direction. So this is the warp end and this are the weft. So from the core, this is the core thread, from the core, some fiber, uh, the yarns are protruding towards the surface. So the final yarn look like this one. It's not clear, but anyhow, okay. So the yarn and it will look like a fussy appearance. That means fibrous material you can see in the outermost surface. Then, in the second loom process, what we will do? We will arrange the loom with less ends per inch, and also the warp yarn should be in a coarse end. Okay, coarse yarn lelega, then with a less ends per inch, we will arrange the all the ends. Then these strips, what is the strips? That is called a chenille weft. Your first loom we have fabric binake, then other say we have cut in a strip to strip form. That strip form is known as chenille weft. That chenille weft we are inserting in the second loom as a weft. Clearly, in the first loom, what you will get it? Ah, the end product is that the fabric we will get it, that, that fabric we will cut in a long strip format, then that strip is used as a weft in the second loom process. Okay, this process is known as setting. Setting matlab, the first loom, that chenille weft, that weft we are using as a normal weft in the second loom. That process is known as setting. We do me bata diya, same thing dekh lena apko. Here you can see. Here in the second loom, you can see, sorry, cold came. Okay, right. So, first, what you will do? I have made the ah, yes, in this one, <coughs> the second loom, you can see this less. In sponge we are arranging and also the warp end is the coarser one. So the first loom end product that is called chenille weft in the form of strips that is inserting as the weft. So in this manner if you are proceeding we will get the chenille exminister fabrics. So this is the easiest method. 
that is we are adopting for the handloom. Okay, for examination point of view, you have to write this thing. So, what are the disadvantages of this pro, uh, this process? The main disadvantage is that the time consumption. You know, we required two loom separate warp beam. We have to pre uh, prepare for uh, both looms. You know, then yet we have to cut it and inserting it as a uh, weft, and also that weft we have to set it in a proper manner to get the proper design. So this is the time consumption. Consumption is more. And some alternative method is developed by the technologist that is called. In this one, what you will do? First, they will make a one uh, normal uh, fabric. That means Hessian backing cloth. Hessian backing cloth. H e s s i a n. Hessian backing cloth. It means uh, with the coarser material, we are making a fabric. That means as usual, plain view fabrics we are making. Then what will happen? We will apply the gum or adhesives on the surface of the fabrics. Then the chenille weft that we will just place over the surface of the first fabric. That means Hessian fabrics. That means which is applying the applied with the uh, gum. So what will happen? It will adhere to the surface and it looks like say chenail fabrics. That's one of the easiest method but uh, the durability of the fabric is badly affecting the st uh, structural stability and also the rigidity and the texture this will badly affect. So that is one of the method. Okay. Then the next we will see the real process. The real chenille exminister fabrics, how it is made, that we will see. This is for your knowledge purpose. You can see. First, what you will do, we will make a suitable graph. We will select a suitable graph with a proper count of graph paper. Right. That means the ratio is we can say that uh, one is to half. In that ratio, we will select it. That means in one inch, if uh, ten vertical columns are there, five horizontal columns will be there. In this manner, we will select the graph paper. Right? Then, next, our final design. What should be our appearance in the fabric? That we will see. So, in this example, uh, you can see that hmm, you can see here you know, different markings are there. Some here diamond, some round, then slash, dot. You know. So, uh, then uh, another one mark. Likewise, different markings are there. These markings denote the colors. Okay, each different mark denotes each color. Suppose the diamond is red, so in this pura, this area full and full red will come. So this is black, suppose. So in this area will be black, uh, this double slash that may be having yellow color. So accordingly, we will allot the different notation or different markings which represent different colors. So accordingly, what should be the overall outcome of, of, of our design that we are creating by using different colors. Okay, clear? Then, each vertical column of the design, okay, here you can see, you see the cursor movement, each vertical column denotes two Peaks of the first weaving. Go malum hai. There will be two loom process. So in the first loom, what we have inserting? We are inserting ah the third in, in a form of a weft. Anna? So each vertical column denotes two peaks of the first 
loom process okay each horizontal column sorry column near row each horizontal row denotes chenail weft yarn of the second loom process samjh mare ki nahi re once again i will tell you each vertical column denotes two peaks of the first loom process and each horizontal row in the final design denotes the chenail weft yarn of the second loom process so clear suppose after making the design so in this way you have to make the design right then next what you have to take it out you just uh, rotate this design okay so here you see this arrow mark portion and in the within the bracket that portion i am going to rotate it here you see here next step you know so this portion i am rotating so first to do this marking first to that marking then next step dot to dot to dot here also to dot to dot you know likewise this portion just to give an example i am taking okay then here what you will do this is the loom arrangement in original chenail x mister fabrics we are using the goes view okay goes and lino view you can say what is the specialty of goes view goes view is the uh, view in this one cross weaving is takes place cross weaving what in by cross weaving there will be two type of thread that is called one is called one is called standard end so in this case you can see this is the standard end and another one is called so in this case red na no, that is called cross end okay the black one is called standard end and this one is called red one is called cross end what is the specialty of this one the cross end will rise or the cross end will move in a from left to right and right to left with an interlacement with the picks so here you can see first it is it was down at this position then rise over the standard end and again down so here the crossing is takes place again cross over then up in this manner separate mechanism is required for this cross weaving so the gaze arrangement is required in the modern loom for making chenail x mister so accordingly what will happen the loom we will uh, we will arrange in this manner first the standard end okay so in the ratio one is two st uh, standard end and one cross end so this consequently two group we will select it okay uh, in total it will become five end group sorry six end will uh, group will take place that is uh, in this one uh, four four will be the standard and two will be the four will be the standard and two will be the cross then overall five threads will be in a same group okay then after that misdend is takes place misdending misdending matlab there will be no end will be there so if you use normal uh, read you can avoid dending in this next portions or you can use special type of read which is having dent in a particular area so which one is method so the concept is that each after each group there should be a gap so based upon the gap means the width of gap the file structure will be raised that means 
suppose here uh, the total 5 centimeter is the total uh, gap so after weaving if you are cut it what will happen the one side is 2.5 and here also 2.5 will be the pile height okay so here you can see the color you know, each color i told you in the each vertical column having represent two peaks of the first weaving so this is a first weaving so in this one based upon the color suppose this uh, slash represent uh, green means two means green peak we are inserting so one special type of loom here we are using that is called a rigid rapier means single rapier mechanism which is functioning with the principle of rigid rapier okay what's the special type of rigid rapier the special type of rigid rapier is that with the insertion of one pick or an another way while the movement of one pick there will be an insertion of two picks okay matlab ek hi bar left wo uska original position se wo dusra salvet jab tak jayega fir wo aayega to kya karega there will be insertion of two picks will be takes place that is one mechanism is uh, there okay so accordingly so each vertical column that represent two picks so accordingly based upon the color so here the dot is represent yellow so this blue represent this line and this line represent dark blue accordingly based upon the color we will insert the pile picks okay then after weaving this is our fabric this fabric we will cut in this from the through the middle way okay after cutting it what will happen uh, here you can see the pile is rising from the this foundation na this is the yarn core jo yarn cores ka core se this fiber tuft will rise ye jo yarn hai usko jo twist and twist hoga to that fiber tuft ho jayega this will projecting from the foundation so iska ek khasiyat ye hai aur the speciality ye hai this will be in a unidirectional that means due to this cross weaving techniques you are adopted that's why it will become in a unidirectional that means a jo yarn dekha the strips dekha to you can see one uh, core will be there but the fiber tuft will be in a same direction wo twist nahi hoga okay that is a, one of the main features of this uh, technique okay so accordingly long strips we will get it a long strips dekha to kya rahega suppose this is the long strip dekha to this portion will be you know a long cut karke hum horizontally rakha to this portions will be green next yellow next blue in this manner we will get it okay then after getting this strips we will bound on a special type of package package ka special thing is hai wo twist nahi hoga jo wind karne ke time extra twist nahi usme applicable nahi karega so accordingly suitable package we will wind it then in next loom process what you will do a special type of arrangement is there then you can see here that is the ah uh, what are the ends there will be on ground ends two stuffer ends and one catcher or binder ends so that order is that one ground two stiff stuffer ends again one ground two stuffer one ground two stuffer and one catcher or binder ends so what are the ratio of picks the picking ratio is that two picks to one chenail that means do pick karne ke baad ek chenail weft we are we will insert okay the picking order will be two picks to one chenail the ends will be one ground end to two stuffer ends then one binder or catcher and two three ground ends 
okay the ratio is that once again you see two picks to one chenille pick one grounded to two stuffer and and one binder or catcher to three grounded so accordingly hum idhar dekh sakte hai na one binder is to three ground three ground is to hai na six uh, stuff uh, stuffer ends accordingly we will arrange the threads then you see what is the uh, function of stuffer end stuffer end yarn will work like a ah uh, stuffer end will work like a ah uh, stuffer end is like a wadded threads okay that means what is the special of wadded threads wadded threads will not interlace with it. any threads that will lie in the middle the same thing the stuffer and also will work as a wadded threads okay that will lie in the middle okay then here you can see this is the first pile pick okay here the cross section that means left cross section diagram in this one ah this round is the pick first pick this is second pick and the third one is the chenille pick okay this are the end and you can see that is the first end is the ground end and this is the stuffer end and here is the binder end you can see so what's the function of binder end binder or catch end will interlace with the ah uh, first ground pick and also the chenille weft okay the binder or catcher end will interlace only with the first and third means uh, first ground pick and chenille pick so in this manner you can see it is interlaced with the ground pick and the chenille pick so this is the chenille pick you know so stuffer end will be in the middle and the ground end is interlaced with the pile pick and you know, first pile pick and the second pile pick so due to this interlacement what will happen this stuffer end also will be uh, in, uh means that will become in the middle of the uh, this view so finally you can see this is the foundation you know these are all the foundation of the cloth and from the foundation this chenille weft is projecting from the foundation so if you see the final fabric you can only see the a uh, long fiber tuft with the different color you know based upon the uh, you know after inserting each pick after inserting each chenail weft we have to stop the loom then we have to adjust the pick you know based upon the color so based upon the that location we will just move here and there and make it finalize then make it combit then beat it okay this it is a laborious process but the uh, appearance of the fabric is excellent okay so with this i am concluding my topic okay thank you ah, on, once again you can see the uh, the design also here in this graph okay this ground end is relates to the first stitching end up also here only the chenille weft that is interlaced with the binder that also i have showed here okay okay thank you